Hello everyone, this is Gally and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Dragons. Today we're going to learn how to draw tails in dragons. Tails are very important because they keep your creature balanced. Just like any animal uses their tail for a reason, well dragons might use it to walk around and you know, maybe hit other prey while they're trying to chase it. For this I'm going to create a basic outline of a dragon. And we would have like his neck, the rib cage, spine, the legs. This is like a, a normal quad quadruped dragon. So it means he has only four legs. The tail, in this case, is joined by important muscles. And you'll see, for example, it would join the hip, hip bone. It would probably look like this if we were drawing a normal dragon. And by normal, I mean the traditional European kind of looking dragon. Why is the tail so thick? Well, in this case, if our dragon had wings, it would work perfectly to anchor them and make it easier to take flight. And also because this long tail will balance the long neck. But let's check, for example, the internet. And in this case, we're just gonna see like animal tails. And you will see there's a lot of things from cosplay to like different creatures and some very interesting drawings. And what I do is I Google and research different animals. So in this case, we'll be looking, for example, at a lemur. When they jump, their long tail keeps them balanced so they don't go forward and fall down. This also helps them grab onto things. And in this case, we're gonna open this it's from photo bucket, I think. Hmm. Well, it's okay. The cheetahs as well, when they're running, their tail moves to the side and helps them to keep um, a different path. For example, if they're running straight ahead and they, they want to attack their prey from this side, the tail switches back into the other position so he can turn into this position to the left and not fall because they're going really fast. We can also use tails as weapons, just as this Ankylosaurus, which is like a very strong mace at the end of the tail, so that could probably hit another animal and break their bones. That's really cool. And this is like a very nice inspiration for a dragon. So for example, this guy, he's a normal dinosaur, right? And the tail doesn't have anything at the end. So let's see, there's also this guy who has prehensile tail, which means he can grab onto things. Or kangaroos use this as another leg. So it's like plenty of animals you can grab examples from. Chameleons, lemurs, and there's so, so many different examples you can grab. Well, we will learn and I would recommend you Google Terry Whitledge. She's amazing. She has a schoolism course on animal anatomy and it's the best thing ever. You can search all the drawings she has and you will see how well she knows the anatomy of her animals. And in this case, for example, you will see the tails. Like in the crocodile or this guy. This is like one of the best examples. So look at this beauty. As you can see, she did the bones first. And this is done by researching different animals. Because this is uh, an animal she invented. And it's not real, but you can see 
and that she grabbed the inspiration from other creatures. She did the muscles of the tail, and as you can see, they're just like the one we were drawing before. They're joined by this muscle here. She teaches the names of the muscles, which I won't do here. I just want to simplify this for anyone who's trying to draw a dragon without that much of a fuss. But I do recommend to learn the muscles and anatomy because that will make you so much better. And in this case, for example, she drew this muscle here. This is a very important muscle because it's what anchors the tail to the body. So I would recommend first trying to learn the anatomy of the animal you chose to get inspiration from and draw on top of it, which is what I usually do. So now I am going to lower the opacity of our dragon and I'm going to draw on top of it. So a dragon would have a spine and this is you know where the tail will start and our tail doesn't have to be this way it can be thin like a cat's or maybe we want it to have spines or spikes on it you know or the typical thing in the back there's also the possibility of feathers and at the end having feathers as well or why not maybe a frill there's so many options you can do for the tail but I have one recommendation and that is something I did before which was a mistake we're gonna see back into my gallery you will see that I have many different kinds of dragons there's one in particular whose tail I killed and by killed I mean I didn't really think through when I was assigning him and it's a fairly famous picture I've made from a while ago I don't even know still here but you will see what's wrong with it so as you can see this is a, an old drawing I did it was back 10 years ago so it you can see very well I don't know strange details that maybe you won't see in my newest pictures but you see that the tail not only is it way too long it has a problematic end because this thing is too heavy and there's no way this dragon can probably, you know, lift this thin part of the tail with this heavy thing at the end and, well, not break it. And it's way too curly. That's one of the things. Well, let's not talk about the wings and such, but the tail. In this example, the tail is definitely not working. But I do have other dragons that, well, they work much better. Like this one. You can see in my newest drawings that I kind of thought <laughs> thought it through. In this case, the tail is well balanced, it fits the animal, it ends nicely in fur, and you can see how he would probably be able to move it easily comparing him to the other one, right? So that's my point. If you're going to make your dragon's tail very flamboyant and very detailed and with a lot of things, and well, that's nice and all. But always think of the function. If your tail does not have a purpose, then make it at least believable. That's a very important suggestion I want to make. And, well, maybe add some details. In the end, like a spike or any detail that you add must help your creature in some way because that's what nature does with the creatures that are in the world right you can just google dragons and you will see so many different examples the ones from game of thrones for example their tails are just straight and fine so they can fly easier 
Some of them have spikes at the end. You can see so many different kinds of dragons in the world, like the ones that are Asian dragons. Usually their tails are just normal. Drogon, from, from the one I was talking about, the Game of Thrones, you can see the spikes here and the frills. And it works because that's the rest of his body. This one, for example, is feathered, which is beautiful. There's no limit to the kinds of tails you can create for your dragons. So I recommend you go and choose an animal you like. Or maybe do some fan art, like how to train your dragon, and get inspiration from their dragons. See how they did the ending of their tails, look a little different. How they use it as a rudder, like on a ship or a plane, to move and change direction. Those things were based on anatomy of real life animals. And that's all for now, I think. I hope this video has helped you to create your dragon's tails. If you like it, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to know when I submit more videos. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye-bye.